Hi guys and welcome to another Divi4 WordPress theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've been putting this little site together to demonstrate some of the great features of the Divi4 theme. Now if you want to take it for a test drive you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. Today what we're going to do is we're going to make this menu our own. We're going to customize it with a bit of custom CSS make it look a little bit more like our site. Here's what we've got at the moment and here's what we're going to turn it into. We're going to make these sort of pill shaped buttons that are orange and blue like we've got on the rest of our site here. Just to keep it in style with the rest of our theme. Pretty easy to do, we've got to use a bit of custom CSS but don't let that panic you it's pretty easy to do and while I'm doing this CSS coding don't worry, worry about copying it uh, I'll put it below the video and you're welcome to use it if you wish so let's get started I've written this CSS code here and I'm just gonna delete it uh, it's just down to there and save the changes I've got a check mark. If we go back up to the site, those should go back to how they were. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, well, it's gone back to how it was. Just got to make one more change there to get it exactly back how it was. So I'm going to go because we made a custom menu for this. So I'm going to go to the theme builder. And I just need to change our active link back to the color that it was before, which I believe was blue. Menu text, active link color, blue. Save that. Save our changes. And we'll have to come back in here and undo that at a later date. Save our changes. go back here and refresh we should have our little home button back as well with the blue there we go okay so this is what we had initially I can get rid of this page here and what I'll do is I'll keep this one open and I'll get my CSS up as well so I'm going to dashboard Divi now I want to go to theme options I'm hitting the middle button so opens in another tab because I may as well keep that open I know I'm going to ch change it in a minute on the general tab in theme options this is where our custom CSS is down the bottom you can also get to it via the theme customizer they've got custom CSS there all right I'm using Google Chrome here it's got the great inspector tools so if I look at something just right click and hit inspect we can start changing things around and this is non-destructive so it won't actually do anything in once we refresh it until we actually write that code into our theme options here so I might on the actual AREF the link as you can see for each page there it doesn't matter which one you do because we're going to do them all the same and if we look over here this is what we're dealing with EP menu zero header menu list item a so I'm going to start adding my style to here the first thing I want to do is use our nice blue color that we've been using throughout this theme as the background color so I'm going to copy my blue color that I know I'm going to want to use and I'm going to go in here just click after that curly bracket there and I'm going to say background colon and paste in the color and put a semicolon on the end of it now, as you can see we've now got a, a blue background going on here or the blue background we want fantastic I actually want the writing to be white though so underneath there I'm just going to click after it and start a new one I say color FFF which is white now we've got to overwrite some styles here so I'm going to need to go back and make that active page white again which is what we undid just now I'll do that in a moment so we've got the 
background color we've got the actual color that we want the text now I need a bit more space either side now we've got limited space here to work with because we've got three columns going on here so I can't give it too much padding and too much margin because it'll spill over and they'll double up on each other so what I'm going to do is say padding top and bottom 10 pixels so I'm going to again I'm going to add this and we may have to use the important class to overwrite previous styles so I'll say padding and if I put in two entries first will be top and bottom second will be left and right I can try it with just one which will do all of them at 10 pixels so I'll say 10 pixels okay that's not doing a whole lot let's try putting that important class in exclamation important there we go that's done it's given it 10 pixels all round now as you can see it's kind of spilled over these are spilt down let's see why that is I suspect it's the container above them yet we just hover over the container that's above them we can see that there's a bit of uh, margin left and right I'm just going to click on that list ID list item ID right there and oh yeah we've got padding right and left so I want to change that to zero and this one also to zero I'm just left clicking on it till it highlights and put that to zero there we go they're, they're perfectly got no gap between them now and they're all on the same line so if we go back to our list item here to our anchor tag where we were writing that code before just give them a little margin here I'll go after my padding I'm going to go margin and I'll give it five picks I'll give it five picks top and bottom so it's giving it five picks top bottom bottom right and left let's actually add another one just in front of it and we'll say say 15 pixels now I'll give it 15 top and bottom and five right and left there we go that's made a more sort of the shape that I want so that's fine now I need to make them curved I want to give them that border radius so I'm going to add another one border to give them that pill shape and we use 50 pixels on the rest of them which makes it a nice round ends on it there we go so we're almost there now what else do we want to do we want to give it a bit a little bit of box shadow so I'll use one that I usually use box shadow and we're going to give it say two pixels by five pixels by 10 pixels spread and a color of 777 hashtag 777 there we go that's giving it a nice little box shadow underneath there giving our buttons a bit of depth okay now we need to make this actually happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything that we've got there from the dot all the way down to the closing curly brackets hit control C to copy or you can right click and hit copy however you prefer to do it because when I refresh now if I just get this out of the way and refresh that'll go back to how it was because we've not hard written it into the actual theme so let's hard write it into the theme so we'll go to our theme options to our custom CSS box I'm going to start at the top I'm going to drop down what's there a couple now I'm going to put a title in which will be forward slash star star forward slash to comment out our title and we'll say menu buttons that's fine and I just need to paste that code that we had in here there we go hit save changes 
Now there's another little bit of code that I didn't copy over. I'll have to redo and copy that, which was the actual list item padding itself. So when I go back to here now, refresh, we should have our blue buttons, but they might not be aligned correctly. Yeah, they've jumped down to a different page here. And the reason was there was that second bit of code. If I inspect, I should say they've jumped down to a little line there. If I go into our list item instead of the anchor tag, we needed to change that padding I changed before, which is right here. I just want to change that to zero. And I want to change this bottom one to zero also. Left click, highlight it, put in your value. There we go. Now I need to just copy this from the dot all the way to the closing curly bracket. Go back to our options. I'll put this just below. There we go. What I'm going to do, we didn't actually change the font weight here. That was already there. So I'm going to delete that because we don't need to have it there. I just chopped off the last curly bracket. Want to make sure that's on there or else it won't work. There we go. And as you can see, when I did that, it gave an error message, which is great. Okay, well, we should go back, and this shouldn't actually change now. When I refresh, it should stay exactly the same. Okay, and here's our active link color, and it's already got an important class, so we're not going to be able to override that here with a bit of CSS. So I have to go back into our uh, theme builder and actually do it in the header that we created. So here's the header we created. I'm just going to undo what we did just now with the active link color. So go into the module, design, menu text, active link color. I'm going to change that to white. Save that. Save our changes. And exit. Back to our templates. Save those changes. Now when I go here and refresh our active link, that should be white also there. There we go. And what I'd like to do now is when we hover over, I'd like to change that to our orange color that we've been using down here. This sort of orange color there, for instance, and on that button down there. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the link again, make sure I'm on it where we wrote that text just now. I'm going to go over here to hover. Now I guess I should have mentioned this before with the Google Chrome inspector here. You've got two tabs and one you want to have on elements. It'll have HTML here and the other one you have to styles and it'll have CSS here. Maybe in different places on yours. You can change where you have it with these little buttons here. But as long as you've got styles on one and elements on the other, you'll have HTML and CSS. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to hit the little hover button and select the hover title right there. And if we look down here now, is ET menu a hover. Now all I want to do here is put in our background. So I'm going to copy my orange color. And I'm going to write in background, colon, paste in that orange color, put a little semicolon after that in case I want to uh, add some more text. Now it's crossed it out. So we've obviously got a background color going on here. So we need to put the important class behind that to make it happen. So let's click on that again and put hashtag and put exclamation important. Now, as you can see, it's actually changed that there. When we hover over any of these, those should change to that orange color too, which is fine. So I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to copy from the dot to the end of the important there, the semicolon. And we'll have to add a closing curly bracket. Always got to make sure you've got an opening and closing one. 
I'm simply going to add this below our last entry here. And as you can see, I've got a little error indicator there telling me I've got no brace on the end. So let's just put a closing curly bracket there and drop that down. Save that. Fantastic. We're almost there. So now if I refresh, that should do nothing. It should change exactly the same. Yet when we hover over our buttons, they should change to orange. Now what you can do, that's actually working quite nicely. If you wanted to change the duration time of that color change there, you can do that with a simple transition duration bit of CSS. Let's change it, make it take a little bit longer, say um, three quarters of a second. Let's go to our options. And in the main one, not the actual hover one, you may think it's going to be in the hover, but it's not. We want to put this in the main one, our top entry here. Just going to click on there, drop down one. I'm going to say transition dash duration colon. And what did I say? About uh, 0.75 seconds. So it's 0 0.75 seconds. So that should take three quarters of a second now, semicolon. Save our changes. Go back to the page. And before I refresh, when we hover over now, I guess that's taking, I don't know, less than half a second probably. Now let's refresh and do it. See, it's a bit more gradual now. It's taking three quarters of a second. So that's just another way of adjusting it. I mean, what we could do, we could give these all a fixed width. So they're all the same, but I just don't have enough space to do that in between here. I could get rid of my social media icons and do it that way because there's another column on the end here and these will fall off the end. For instance, if I Go down here and I'll just add width of say, well I'll try 100 picks. They're going to fall down, they're going to spill down to the line below. So let's try that. They're all the same, they're all the nice size there, but there's just not enough room to do that with what I've got going on there. So I'm going to undo that, simply just uncheck it, and we'll leave it at that. So there is how to customize your menu links, make them look like buttons, style them with a bit of custom CSS. I hope you found that useful and enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.